to confront the people of their sin. Warn them that if you don't straighten up, you're going to be in exile. You're going to be punished. You're going to be in a form of imprisonment. But although God sent him, they rejected him. Let that soak in. But he yet remained faithful to God. You know why? Because you cannot allow your distraction to destroy your destiny. You cannot allow your distraction. To destroy your destiny. And let me say this to you this morning. If Satan doesn't want to do anything else, it is one of his assignments to get you distracted. You know why? Because when you get distracted, it's hard to get anything else done. When you get distracted, you get off focus. When you get distracted, you get off balance. When you get distracted, you get off course. In the race that's been set before you to run, you don't run it because you are distracted. And let me just share this with you. Some of you are at that distracted stage now. All right, all right, all right. Sometimes, in many instances, where you are is what I want you to be. But where you are is not a permanent place. It may be that there is no peace, but God's is not for you to reside there. You are just in a temporary dwelling place for now. But he's teaching you. He's molding you. And he's developing you. But many people won't want to mountaintop development when, in many cases, God doesn't get the best out of us until it pulls us down in the world. I know I'm But he, 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 he has purpose for you. But because you're so distracted, you don't even see. He's teaching you how to lean more on him and less on you. Shut up. Yeah. 
I'd rather shout inside yeah. and be sad on the outside. Because I know somewhere behind my rubbish, God is going to turn things around. Successful by him established, yet he didn't fail in his task. Yeah. What did he do? Wow. You ready? Oh, yeah. This is a big word. Right. This is a whole long statement. This is my entire message summed up in one house. Right. What did he do? His preacher was unsuccessful by him established. They rejected him, although he was sent by God to be a prophet. They ignored him. He went through his own situations himself, but they ignored Jeremiah. But what did Jeremiah do? Forty years, he still remained faithful. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. What did he do? I just gave you the answer. He remained faithful to God. Your 
consecration to be healed. Esau, if he had to consult with you, that would take away from his sovereignty. He doesn't have to consult with you to be healed. He's God. He remembers every pit. He remembers your problem. He remembers your pain. He, he remembers your pressure. And guess what? He remembers your purpose. But most importantly, can I share one more thing? He will remember his promise. And so I then told him with this 29th chapter, verse 11. I got a problem with it. Because I hear people preach all the time. And I go back and look, and sometimes here in the sermon, I disagree with you. Let me tell you why. Something can sound good and not be sound. And, and this is one of those texts that can sound good. And not be sound. Jeremiah 29 11 must be understood in its rightful context. Yeah. Let me share this with you. Take note of this. Keep in mind the distinction between a passage's interpretation and the same passage's application. All right. Don't get the interpretation and the application mixed up. You know why? A passage can only have one meaning, but it can have many applications. I know I'm preaching this morning. Thank you, you're preaching. <laughs> Jeremiah 29 11 has only one meaning. You know why? Because it is addressed to the exiles in Babylon. You're not in Babylon. That's his way to put it. You, you're not in that one. And you're not in this exile. Because see, as a punishment for the sins of Judah, God was going to send the Babylonians to do what? Destroy Jerusalem and the temple and to carry away many of the people to Babylon. Judah is in Jerusalem. Jeremiah has been preaching to them, telling them, turn yourself around. But after they didn't do it, he says, look, you're going into exile for 70 years. And you got to stay here. But why are you there? Go on and go to work. Build your house. Get married. Have your family yeah. while you're there. But many of them who received the promise to get out died. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it didn't bar the promise. Although the destruction of Jerusalem was still to come, Jeremiah writes to the exiles. Tell them that after 70 years, verse 10, you will return to your land. He says in verse 11, God has not forsaken you. He says, I'm paraphrasing, you will be 
restore. That's right. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, what God is doing, this is a right to you now. It may not feel good. Mm, you may not even agree. Yeah. It doesn't even make sense. Yeah. It seems yeah. unfair. Yeah. Yeah. I don't deserve this. I deserve better because I pay my time. I'm faithful in church. I pray my prayers. Nobody told me it was going to be like this. But God says what I'm allowed. It ain't for your bad. I allow it for your good. Because your countenance is off. You're just not looking at it from the right perspective. Because if you're going to see things, let me hold it up. From a spiritual perspective, you can't look at it from the carnal eye. And you can't think of it from the carnal mind. Oh, it don't seem like it's adding up. It doesn't seem like it's making much sense. All right. But God says, let me be who I am. Yeah. And if you let me get in and you get out of my way, yeah. I'm going to give you some supernatural strength that you didn't even know that you could have. If you let me get in it. Yeah. I know it doesn't seem like the truth you found on your job, but then you don't quit your job. Keep going. He's 
God. You may not be in uh, exile in Babylon, but you're in your own exile. And you want to break through. And maybe your enemy won't leave you alone. Life have you in exile from the pain of your past. Mm, and you want to come out. Well, I Just before you give up. Just before you give out. I ain't preaching to two Sundays. Just before you give up. Let me give it to you from the New Testament perspective. Because hopefully you will desire to have God involved in your situation. And if this is going to work out for you, then you ought to grab a hold to what Paul says since you're in your own exile. Romans 8 and 28 says, for we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And I don't want nobody here this morning to get too weary. I don't want nobody to get too worried. But if that wasn't good enough for you, come here, Paul. What else you got to tell other people? Because they are in their own exile. Paul said, well, Pastor, you're in the right chapter. Just keep on down a few more verses. Then ask them the question that's found in Romans 8 and verse 31. What shall
God will 